Joining us here at ASH 2011, we're delighted to have with us Dr. Stephen Hunger. He is the Section Chief of the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders at Colorado Children's Hospital and an internationally recognized expert in leukemia genetics and treatment of ALL. Thanks for stopping by and joining us. Thanks very much for having me. Let's start, Doctor, first with the, uh, the overview of ALL. Sure. Um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL, is the most common type of cancer that occurs in children. Counts for about 30 to 35 percent of all pediatric cancers. Uh, overall, in the U.S. each year, there are five to 6,000 cases of ALL diagnosed, with about half of those in children and about half of those in adults. Uh, this is a, a disease that was incurable 50 years ago, and today, at least in pediatrics, we expect 85% uh, or better will be cured. And some of the best success you have in treating children with this is treating them as children and adolescents in that kind of a setting for them, right? That's right. We, we, we have, uh, if you will, expanded the concept of the age of patients we treat in pediatrics. and. Um, you know, historically, we tended to treat children less than 15 or 16. We've moved up into the late teens and early 20s, and there's a lot of data that suggests for reasons that aren't really cure, uh, clear that uh, older adolescents 16 to 21 treated in pediatric centers on pediatric clinical trials do better than the same age group treated in adult centers on adult trials. So good news in this in this treatment is Irwinase, and you've been involved in the clinical trial with that, now FDA approved. Can you give us some uh, insight on that? Sure. One of, one of the essential drugs in treating childhood leukemia is asparaginase or L-asparaginase. And there are several forms of L-asparaginase available in the U.S., uh, with Irwinase now being the third commercially available. There's what we refer, refer to as uh, native E. coli asparaginase. Uh, which is relatively short-acting. And then there's a longer pegylated form called pegasparaginase or Oncospar uh, that is long-lasting and has become the standard frontline treatment in childhood ALL uh, as part of those multi-agent regimens. The problem with asparaginase products is that they act are proteins. Unlike most drugs, they're proteins um, produced either uh, in bacteria or recombinantly. Um, and uh, so there's an incidence of allergy to them. And once you become aller clinically allergic, you can't get that product again. There's also an incidence of what we call silent antibodies, where patients don't have symptoms of allergy, but uh, have a uh, silent hypersensitivity reaction where they destroy the agent and it's ineffective. So one of the problems we've had until recently is if you develop uh, the, the native asparaginase and the pegasparaginase use exactly the same asparaginase molecule. So if you're allergic to uh, native asparaginase, you can try the pegylated asparaginase. If you're allergic to pegylated asparaginase, the native asparaginase you can't even try. So what's happened is when patients become allergic, there has been no second line drug until recently and you just have to drop that drug out of the treatment regimen without any uh, ability to substitute for it. Uh, Orwinia asparaginase is, is a uh, very similar protein, but it's antigenically different, so that patients who react to the native E. coli asparaginase typically do not react to Orwinia asparaginase and are often able to be uh, treated successfully with Orwinia asparaginase. Uh, so the Children's Oncology Group recently uh, conducted a trial in the United States and Canada testing a replacement of pegasparaginase with Irwinia asparaginase or Irwinase in patients who had developed clinical signs of allergy. Uh, this trial was chaired and conducted by one of my colleagues, Wanda Salzer, who did a fantastic job uh, directing that trial. So how will this now be used? So the, the purpose of the trial was, was to determine whether um, adequate uh, serum levels of asparaginase activity could be obtained that would mimic those seen by pegasparaginase. So because pegasparaginase is long-lasting, six doses of Orwinia asparaginase given on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule at a dose of 25,000 international units per meter squared were used to replace a single dose of pegasparaginase at a dose of 2,500 international units per meter squared. 
with the endpoints of the trial being the ability to, to obtain certain uh, asparaginase activity levels at 48 and 72 hours after the dose, so trough levels. Uh, and the trial was, uh, was quite successful. Um, 58 patients were enrolled in a valuable and the endpoints were achieved in the uh, levels uh, greater than 0 0.1 units per milliliter uh, were obtained in 35 of 35 patients at 48 hours and in 12 of 12 patients at 72 hours after the dose. And this led to the recent FDA approval of Irwin ACE uh, in November uh, and it's now commercially available. Any other aspects of how this might be used in the future? Anything else you'll be doing in research with this? Well, I think the first thing is it will become clinically available to patients. As I mentioned earlier, um, when patients developed an allergy to pegasparaginase, which is the standard frontline drug, and, and that allergic reaction happens in 15 to 20 percent of patients treated on our clinical trials. Previously, there was no recourse. They just stopped taking the drug. Uh, now the drug will be commercially available for purchase um, for a patient on or off a clinical trial and they will be able to, uh, to replace it, to replace the pegasparaginase with Irwiniasparaginase or Irwinase. Uh, I think the, uh, there are some future planned uh, trials under discussion. I think uh, some of the issues are mode of administration. The, the Irwinase is administered intramuscularly and there's a hope that it might be able to be uh, um, administered intravenously and that will be explored in some future clinical trials. Um, but I think, I think the main thing for me is that we are now able to uh, give an effective replacement drug for patients who develop a clinical allergy. Good for you and good for the families and, and the kids involved. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Dr. Stephen Hunger from Colorado Children's Hospital talking about the new FDA approval of Irvone Ace here at ASH 2011.